Good morning. Leaving the Quality Inn here in Carlisle, going back to trail. Went to the uh, diner to have breakfast this morning because the breakfast that was at the Quality Inn was pretty much ran over. <laughs> it was all gone. Not that there was much, wasn't, or not that there would have been much here anyway. It looked like they had a couple kinds of cereal and then a waffle maker. And uh, I don't know. I think I'm starting to get sick of waffles. <laughs> Imagine that, getting sick of something. Uh, so it didn't sound very good, so I went next door to a diner. The good thing is it's kind of like a truck stop or the a diner for the truck stop, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it's built like it used to be if it's not now. It uh, truck, truck, uh, truck stop type of restaurants have a certain look where, you know, it's really big. And then they have the big like bar that you could sit down at or the booths and chairs and seats and normal tables as well. Uh, it just had that look. But more importantly, cheap meals. <laughs> truck stops always have cheap meals. And I love them. Those little diners inside. Yeah. They're made for truckers who love to eat. In fact, I was just leaving and there was a gentleman out in front of the hotel lighting up a cigarette. <laughs> I walked by and he said, you sure do make a fat man feel unhealthy. <laughs> he was laughing, so I laughed too, because I wouldn't have normally laughed at a, a comment like that, but <laughs> because, you know, I don't want to want it to appear that I'm making fun of anybody because that's not who I am, but <laughs> just the way he said it, I couldn't help but laugh. It was funny. He's there lighting up a cigarette and he said, I'm a trucker, so, man, it's hard for me to get out there and get that exercise like you're doing. But, man, I wish I could. So, uh, he wished me good luck on the rest of the trail. And and uh, I wished him good luck on his day. And uh, he said he's trying to get healthier. So, I was like, man, just put your mind to it. You can do it. I know you can. It's not easy to do in a truck. My dad was a trucker. So, I know that's not easy to eat healthy or better your life in that aspect. But... We could do anything we want if we put our minds to it, that's for sure. So as you can see, I'm not on the trail yet. <laughs> I have to walk up here like two tenths of a mile to take a little trail that gets me back to the uh, overpass. That, well, it's an overpass like bridge thing that goes over this road, which is the trail. So I'll be there shortly and I can't wait because every loud vehicle in the city right now is where I am. <laughs> the truck, trucks galore everywhere. But anyway, back to the trail. I'm gonna have a great day today. Another sunny day in the mid 70s. Gonna rock it. Beautiful farmland.
I just can't get enough of it. It is so beautiful being in these fields and all these farms on every side, just green as far as the eyes can see. Obviously, I'm not going to say that I love it as much as the mountains. <laughs> Nobody would believe that, including me. <laughs> but I absolutely love it. The farmland, the bright greens, the fields. I'm not a big fan of going over the interstate like I just did and all that noise. But when you're far enough away from the roads, it's so peaceful and serene. Just want to sit here for hours basking in the beautiful green fields and the peaceful life that is farm life. Wow. Every day, every day never ceases to amaze me the beauty of this land that we get to live our lives in every day. Good morning, friends. How are you? You look like you're very happy cows. You're a very pretty one. Yes, you are. Hello, buddy. Look at that wet snout. to the mountains again. Yo, know, I'm happy every day. Every day I'm grinding, every day I'm climbing, every day I'm conquering, but man, there's something about all these terrain changes that's been happening and this farmland and this green and these flowers and every little time turn you make, it brings you to something different, something beautiful. I'm loving this today.
back in the forest now, up in the mountains. Well, Pennsylvania mountains might be more considered hills. <laughs> but some of these hills have steeper climbs than a lot of mountains. But like I always say, a lot of times the smaller a mountain is or smaller a hill is, the more intense the climb is. So getting ready to climb a little something here. I don't know if I really am summiting anything today. I think it's just some ups and downs uh, coming into Dun Cannon, Pennsylvania. So still a beautiful day. Beautiful to be in the forest. Some trees are blooming. Actually, I'm pretty sure all of them are blooming. <laughs> I just looked up and they're just not extremely visible because they're still just small little buds on the tree. But everything's blooming. Everybody in the forest has gotten the message that spring is here. And it feels glorious. Nice steep little climb takes up to this opening basically looking into the farms that I was just walking through <laughs> absolutely a gorgeous view ah the forest About eight and a half miles into today. Only about 1,200 of elevation, which is pretty low for eight and a half miles, but not complaining because it took me through some beautiful flat country land, farms and beautiful meadows everywhere. Uh, but I do plan on staying around Dun Cannon uh, this evening, which is uh, just about 20 mile mark from where I were, where I were, where I were. <laughs> Oh, my grammatically incorrectness amazes me still at almost 49. Not quite 49, still 48. And since I like to live in the present, I'm only 48. <laughs> Not that it matters to me about turning 49. It's pretty darn cool. If you ask me, then I'm going to be 49 and feeling stronger than I was when I was 20. I don't have a problem with that at all. But I digress. I went down a few rabbit holes there. <laughs> I plan on going around Dun Cannon somewhere to stay the night before continuing on in the morning. And a little history about Dun Cannon. It, the name came about, oh, I don't know, about a hundred years or so ago, uh, when the lady looked over at her husband and said, hey, honey, I'm Dun Cannon these beats. And he said, well, honey, I'm not done canning the peas yet. And there it was. A city was born. Done canning. It's not really where it came from. So for those of you who are gullible, please don't believe that story. It's just what I think about every time I hear the word done canning. It sounds like the very southern way to say, I'm done canning now. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Please don't unsubscribe from me just because my jokes are really bad sometimes. Thank you.
Ooh, doggy. I am pouring sweat. Somebody went and put a hill on my flat land today. <laughs> that was a pretty good incline. It's like going straight up for a minute for the elevation of these hills and mountains around here to be as low as they are. And that one to feel like it was not gonna end. <laughs> but it is warm and it's not as muggy as yesterday. I haven't been sweating too much today. But that one definitely got me sweating. Got me sweating real good. Whew. And I don't even get a summit out of it, I don't think. <laughs> Basically just a pointless up. But that's okay, I need those ups. I can't walk flat all the time. I have to get that body going up. It's the only way it's happy. So I think I got about six, seven miles left uh, before done cannon. And uh, determined where I'm gonna stay then. There's a hostel there. Uh, and then there's a, a historic hotel, kind of downtown, I think. I don't really uh, know or remember, but it's uh, the Doyle. Have a restaurant inside too, but it's a historic one with hiker rates and everything. So I might stay there just because it's like 150 years old, but uh, I might check out the hostel too. Uh, probably not going to go fat. I'd have to go quite a bit past Don Cannon to camp. And I'm not trying to push myself too much today after 28 yesterday. Uh, push myself like four or five miles more than what I was going to do. Uh, but I have a little bit of pain in my heels on both sides. It's not the heel itself. It's And it's not blisters, but it's where blisters would normally be. Uh, I have calluses there. And I think they've just rubbed themselves on these shoes uh, quite a bit. And the shoe is getting worn down. Gonna need to get into my new ones here within 100 or 200 miles. I'm trying to make it last till the end of Pennsylvania so new shoes don't have to be destroyed with the rocks. <laughs> but we will see if that can happen or not because taking care of your feet is one of the most important things you could do out here. So taking care of my feet, I shall do. Uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna, you know, stop at like 20 today. Uh, I mean, I could go past Dun Cannon for some campsites and shelter. Oh man, these stupid gnats are everywhere today. I'm trying to fly in my mouth and in my eyeballs. <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna stop there and, uh, you know, figure out my options once I'm into town. You know, I'm platinum blazing for the last two days. <laughs> Staying in these high falutin one star motels. <laughs> Have you ever been trying to make a point? And then you had a rabbit hole followed by another rabbit hole then another rabbit hole and then you don't remember if you made the point or not later on when you start thinking about it that's where i am right now i don't know if i made a point about my feet so they're not injured they're nothing wrong I'm not, i don't have blisters or anything like that it's just the calluses have been rubbing raw against the shoes most likely uh so a good a good little rest which 20 miles is a rest compared to what i've been doing lately uh and it only hurt after yesterday so it was partially to do with the terrain yesterday uh, my shoes are definitely getting worn down i have uh well over 500 probably more closer to 600 on these now and the last ones i got about seven out of so they're getting close i'm gonna try like i said this part i know i said try to make it till the end of pennsylvania on them so I don't, you know, start to ruin another pair by <laughs> getting the first 200 miles of nothing but rocks on them. So that's kind of the goal. But yeah, see, now I'm thinking that I did already go here and finish this because I do remember saying taking care of your feet is the most important thing. <laughs> anyway, so I might have just repeated everything twice, but that's okay. You'll have that when you get older and you have a white beard and you're in the mountains and really not thinking about anything but pushing through <laughs> but that's one reason i'm gonna stop there tonight and Duncan can instead of going on because i definitely want to rest my feet a little bit tonight before and not push too hard today nice view over here it looks like a little opening Oh, 
Well, it's a nice view, except for those gas line poles. <laughs> Beautiful view down in the valley there. It's been pretty rocky for the last mile or so. And before anyone says it on a comment, because I know somebody will, I know it's going to get worse in Pennsylvania. <laughs> I'm just simply saying, it's gotten rocky. And that's kind of where it starts. Basically Pennsylvania, probably one of the best analogies I heard was actually uh, Fresh Grounds, who is a trail angel, provides food for the hikers. He said basically the first third of Pennsylvania is kind of cruisy. Second third starts to get rocky, third rock. I mean, third rock, <laughs> third part, or third, third, third of Pennsylvania is intense rocks. I would agree with that. And I'm just now getting to the part that's getting close to the second third, which is kind of round Dun Cannon. Uh, this is really nothing here that hasn't been dealt with already on the trail. Just those annoying rocks that stick up, trip you, no real place to step on because they're pointed or angled or whatnot and of course now that I have the camera on it's nowhere near as bad there for about a mile it's just pretty much all rocks with a little bit of spacing in between just enough for leaves to cover up rocks at below so constantly turning your ankles can't go real fast in a section like that if you do you're taking a chance and to each their own but I do not go super fast or even try to go fast through sections like that because I'd rather keep my ankles and feet intact. It's uh, loosened up a little bit here now and it's pretty much just leaves with a rock here and there. So it's obviously not gonna be all the way to Dun Cannon. As you can see, definitely a lot rockier terrain. And it's just gonna keep getting rockier over the next, oh goodness, what is it, 290, like 150 miles? To the end of Pennsylvania and then you get into New Jersey and then you have more rocks <laughs> basically here in north there's a good chance of having rocks Connecticut isn't quite as bad part of New York isn't quite as bad and part of New Jersey isn't quite as bad but overall the more north you get the more rocks you get so it's just the way of life you adapt I'll still be getting decent miles and bigger miles in those sections they just won't be quite as high might not be 25s or 30s might be just 20s but 20s definitely doable with the long days so I'm not worried at all I'm not in a hurry I mean yes I have time that I want to get done with the other things I'm doing this year for the total of 3,500 miles of through hiking for the year but at the same time, I'm not in a hurry. I'm just doing what I need to do for me. Not for anyone else, but for me. What my body requires, what my body wants, what my body craves, which is pushing every day. Sometimes that can mean 15 miles can be a great push for the day. Sometimes that's 30. Sometimes it's 44. <laughs> I do what I do each day for the best of that day and maybe where it's setting me up for the following day. That's really all there is to it. I don't overcomplicate it. I just make it as simple as possible. Keep going north. One step at a time. One day at a time. Oh yeah, and don't forget to eat the food. All the foods. <laughs> Little danger noodle black racer here. Just sitting on the trail. There you go, buddy. Get off the trail. There you go. Right direction. I'm not sure what kind of snake that was, actually. That was a rattlesnake of some sort. It didn't have the big head like most rattlesnakes have that are venomous. 
but that was a venomous snake. He wasn't uh, coiling up on me though or anything. He was just kind of chilling there. But then he went off to the side and I was standing there looking at the map. And all of a sudden I started hearing a rattle. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck? And I turned back and it's the same snake and he's rattling there and he's coiled up now. But I mean, I wasn't close to him. He was just letting me know, hey man, I don't know why you stopped, but don't come over here. <laughs> So that was weird. I've never seen, I actually have seen a black and white rattlesnake out in California. But again, big thick head. Uh, that had a pretty decent sized body, but a smaller head. So I'm not sure. I don't think there's really any other snakes that rattle besides a rattlesnake. Don't know. I mean, that looked like a black racer or indigo racer to me. So I'm not really sure. Learned something new today. Gorgeous view right down here into the valley. Beautiful. And then right over there is Dunn Cannon. Which is where I'm heading. Gorgeous views. It's called Hawk Rock here. Finally got down and into Dunn Cannon. The rocks coming down were slow going. Very steep. That might be actually one of the steepest descents I've seen on the AT so far. There's just big steps down. Nothing dangerous or anything like that. But big steps down. And... Then a lot of loose rock too. Why is it every time I try to say something on a, the camera, <laughs> there's a loud motorcycle or truck that goes by me today. <laughs> they have it in for me, man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was a really, really rocky descent. The fun kind. The steepness, not that big a deal. But the loose rock, yeah. <laughs> Especially when my feet are already kind of sore today. They'll be looking forward to getting the shoes off and having a nice rest. Uh, but basically, I guess I just follow this road for a while and then it'll join other roads for a three mile walk through Dunn Cannon. Uh, but I won't be doing all three of that tonight because the Doyle Motel and the hostel both are about halfway. And of course, if I decide to go somewhere else besides those two, because for some reason I don't like them, then that's also an option. But for now, I walk to basically, I guess it's considered like downtown and go from there.